its behaviour aboard the ANSET flight last night that brought the Queensland side to Perth for the Sheffield Shield Grand Final. Press reports claim police back home in the old data considering pressing charges against Botham after two of his dogs savaged lambs in rural Yorkshire. The world's best all-rounder has been convicted of possessing cannabis, enraged animal liberationists with his planned reenactment of Hannibal's Crossing of the Alps on elephants. And to top it all off, British cricket establishment just doesn't like him. Cricket's mischief maker or just misunderstood. Mike Searle cornered him in the Wackernets for this report. Ian Botham, the world's greatest all-rounder, England's youngest captain this century, and the man who, in 1981, single-handedly saved England from defeat. But he's also the bad boy of cricket, in trouble with both the police and the cricket authorities, convicted in 1985 for possessing cannabis, landing himself on the front pages of newspapers throughout the world with a welter of sex and drug allegations. So, how does he cope with being cricket's black sheep? I basically... Uh... Just laughing, really, and keep on living because um, the, certainly in England, not so much in this country, but certainly in England, uh, they try to throw everything at me, and I'm still there. I'm still hanging on, hanging in there. So uh, I don't think it really worries me too much now, and I tend to treat a lot of it with just contempt. Yeah, why? Why do they do this? Well, I think unfortunately in England, if you're a little bit successful, you then they've got to be left open to be attacked. Tall, tall poppy syndrome. Yeah, well, that's the way it seems to go. Yeah. yeah. But he says it's not really true. He's just misunderstood and that whatever he does I mean, just seems to catch the headlines. No, I don't think so. I, I'm, no, I'm no angel. Um, but uh, by the same token, I'm certainly not uh, what I'm made out to be by the press. Yeah. So, no, I think that a lot of it's very unfair and very unjust. You don't have a very high regard of the media, do you? No. Do really. you... And I must admit, the Australian media I found excellent, so I'll say that. The English media I don't have very much time for. Why do you think they've, they've got it in for their own people like that? I don't know. Uh, I think the biggest problem is that um, you're getting monopolies owning newspapers uh, and you're getting one or two people owning the lot, so it's becoming uh, a tabloid war in England, uh, whereas you've got, say, some newspaper in England that sells a circulation, daily circulation of five million, and you have, say, the Express of three quarters to, to one million. So, therefore, there's a lot of rivalry and a lot of war, and unfortunately, uh, the one thing that always suffers in those situations is the truth. Mm. But, yeah, I think in England people... Most people regard the papers now as today's uh, newspaper, tomorrow's fish and chip record. But last night he was in trouble again, or so some passengers on his flight from Melbourne would have us believe. Complaints have been made to the federal police that he and his teammates were being more than just a little loud. Last night's trouble on the plane. As, as usual, it's uh, a mountain out of a molehill. Um, but that's the, I suppose that's the problem with being in the public eye, you've just got to accept that. So, you know, I just carry on with living, because if you st stopped and worried about everything like that, you'd never get anywhere and you'd never do anything. What happened last night? Oh, right, it's, it's nothing, really, nothing, really. It's just, uh, I, to me, it's, uh, it wasn't, it's not even worth walking, worrying about. So. A huge misunderstanding again, but that wasn't the case when he was in trouble with the English Test and County Cricket Board for allegedly bringing the name of cricket into disrepute following newspaper claims he had admitted smoking pot. But the bad boy of cricket really is a good boy at heart. He has already helped raise more than $4 million for leukaemia research by walking from one end of Britain to the other. But again, the British press found something other than his good deed to latch onto, and he found himself at the centre of more drug allegations. Understood. At the end of the month, Botham puts away the willow and leather and puts on hiking boots. And with a herd of elephants, he plans to follow Hannibal's trail across the Alps. Uh, to raise money for leukaemia, leukaemia research. We've raised about £2 million up to now on previous walks. And I think and hope that this one could be anything up to £8, £10 million. But what about his long-term plans? He's already playing for Queensland, so will we ever see him donning the green and gold? I don't think I could ever leave England because I think everyone has their roots and everyone has their home. Um, for me, uh, England will always be my home. Well, with all respect, may pay Guy the Gorilla to hang around for our next report, the dangers of alcohol abuse. On a